More and more people are working in 3D now and the existing tree tool certainly has the ability to work with you in that regard. Not only for displaying uh, 3D, uh, the 3D portion of the trees, it can also be useful for uh, doing shadow diagrams when that is required by councils for uh, um, showing the, uh, how the existing trees might affect um, the adjoining uh, properties and so on. Let's switch to a file that has our plant in it and here's our 2D plant. We haven't yet turned on 3D in this plant and the only other things I've added here are Heliodon which will allow us to uh, see shadows and that was added from the uh, visualization palette. There it is there and to see shadows or to apply textures you do need to have RenderWorks and I've also created a big uh, extrude just to represent the ground just so that you can see that it's just a big flat area you can see the tree is still just 2D it's not really doing anything alright go back to a top plan view to select the tree and let's look at 3D properties by clicking the 3D properties button now the first thing you need to do if you want to create 3D geometry is to check the box here and then you can choose a canopy shape and the, uh, there are a number of standard canopy shapes. These are all CSG solids. They are all in the default content existing tree uh, file. And you'll notice that the symbol name begins with 4. That defines them as being a symbol that needs to be displayed in this particular image pop-up. You can also use uh, image props if you want to, to represent existing trees. However, uh, one disadvantage of image props is that they don't, or they can't, respond to varying canopy shapes. They can't respond to the diameter at breast height, and they also can't respond to the first branch height because they're just a static image. That's why these are more flexible in this regard. Uh, next, you can choose the kind of trunk, and we'll start with a straight short, and I'll show you how these uh, trunks look and we've got our canopy uh, class and our trunk class. We'll choose our default classes for those. This will allow us to alter the color of the canopy, the color of the trunk, or if you have render works, it will also allow you to apply a texture to the canopy and or the trunk. And we have our usual apply, apply properties section at the bottom here if you want to apply these settings here to other objects in the drawing. All right, so let's just go with those settings so we'll click OK and then switch to say a left ISO view and you can see the tree there and I'll render that in OpenGL just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like so there we have the canopy and the trunk so if I select that you'll see that if I change the canopy height say to 12 meters the tree will get higher if I change the diameter then I'll get a larger canopy if I maybe just set this back down to 10 so that we can see the top of it. If we change the diameter at breast height um, to say 200 then we'll get a tiny little trunk probably more likely to be something like this for this tree and of course we have the first branch height which this will also respond to so if I set that to 3 meters the canopy is going to get a bit more squashed up as you can see in that view there. Let me just move this down a little bit. Alright, I might actually increase, uh, re reduce this to about 8 meters and increase the height to say 12. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you're using the minimum canopy, we've got 8 as the maximum and 5 as the minimum, then this shape will also take that into account as well. Looks like a paddle pot. So we might turn that off. Alright, so uh, now I talked about the trunks. Um, if you're not applying textures, then you can use the short version of all of the trunks. If you are uh, using textures then and the texture is transparent, then you may want the trunk to extend um, part way up into the canopy. And that's what some of the other options are for. But let's switch back to a wireframe view and then just look at this. So we'll go back to 3D properties and we've got straight short. If we set it to straight long, 
you'll see that we get this long trunk uh, tapering up there into the canopy. Let's set it to curved short. So curved means that we get at the base of the trunk we get something that uh, is sort of increasing in size uh, as it touches the ground and it's just slightly randomized. Again we've got a long version of that to protrude into the canopy and if we look at the random curved short then this will kind of be a little bit more freeform in shape not radically but just a little and again we've got that in the long format as well. So if we render this up it will take on the default settings which is just a, a white fill for the trunk and whatever canopy uh, was defined in our um, resource file or default content file. Now if you want to change those colors we can do it by class because we've allocated classes to these. So let's go up and click the edit class dialog and you'll see here we've got the uh, 3D canopy and the 3D trunk class. Let's start with the canopy and we'll double click that and if I just turn on use it creation and choose the color I want then the canopy will take on that color. We'll just go with that and I'll do the same for the trunk. Let's this time we'll click edit, we turn on use it creation, choose the color that we want for the trunk and click OK and OK and we just need to regenerate this and you'll see that it will take on those slightly changed settings so the canopy is a bit lighter and the trunk has that color applied to it. Now if we, uh, if you have RenderWorks I can then do a final quality uh, render and you'll see here that we'll actually get a shadow being cast from the tree. Now if you have RenderWorks that means you can also use textures. So let's go up to the class menu and actually add uh, a texture. We'll start with the canopy and we'll edit that again and we'll come down here to other and choose texture and I've actually created a texture which I'll show you in a moment. I've called it leaves so we'll go with that texture for the canopy for the trunk. Uh, let's go with a texture, uh, something that maybe this one here, just something that's got a bit of uh, variety to it. And we'll go ahead and click OK and OK. And you'll see that will now render. And I'll just force a full re render of this so that you see the effects of this texture that I've created here. Now this texture has um, a couple of attributes to it. One is that it has patches where you can actually see through it and this can be useful if you've got a tree that doesn't have a solid canopy and you're trying to give an indication of the fact that the tree isn't going to completely block the light out um, when the uh, when the shadow is being cast. And it's also got a variety in uh, in the solid parts as well. I'll now show you how that was created. It's actually a fairly simple texture to create but it can be quite effective and you can play around with the settings as I'll show you. In the resource browser uh, we'll click on the home button here and we'll go to textures. Oh, By the way while we're here in symbol folders you'll see ET symbols, existing tree symbols and these are all of the symbols that I've used in this file. Uh, the 2D ones here and the 3D ones here so you're also able to edit these if you wanted to but we're actually going to edit the textures so we'll collapse that and expand the textures and here's the leaves texture that I created so let's right click on that and choose edit. Now we're using two shaders in this textures for the color shader we're using clouds and for the transparency shader we're using eroded. Let's begin by looking at the clouds texture and if we click edit the clouds texture allows you to choose two colors and then mix them up and it can be useful for all sorts of things. Um, it's just a, one of those generic textures. I mean it, it can represent clouds in the sky if you use kind of dark blue and a very light blue 
but um, in this case what I've done is to uh, increase the scale a lot um, which increases the detail size and I've also um, set this reasonably high and, and that just gives us a mottled effect in the solid parts of the texture. Okay, and I've chosen a fairly dark color here, but um, I maybe set that just a slightly, uh, a slight bit darker. So that's the cloud shader. So fairly simple, just a mixture of those two colors. Predominantly, it's this this green color here. Uh, now this is the interesting one. For the transparency shader, I've chosen eroded, and the eroded texture. Again, I've increased the scale quite a lot. We have uh, an opacity slider and uh, a fuzz slider. Now generally you want to set the fuzz slider all the way to the left so you don't have to worry too much about that. This slider controls how much of the um, the tree, uh, how holy the tree is I guess. Um, so if I make this, if I drag this further to the right there'll be less holes in the tree. If I drag it further to the left there'll be more holes in the tree and this uh, number here affects the size of the holes. So if I increase uh, this then we're getting less transparent areas and let's go ahead and click OK and you'll see now as this regenerates I've got far fewer uh, transparent areas in the tree. So let's go back in and edit that again and we'll decrease that back down so that you can see the effect of taking it the other way and you'll see now the tree is uh, way too transparent so we'll go back in there and just uh, set that back to where it was maybe somewhere around here now the scale is quite interesting. If we set the scale to a smaller scale, then the holes will be much smaller. So if I set that to say 10, and let's click OK, you'll get this kind of thing happening. So really you can get some quite reasonable effects um, using just that eroded texture to uh, to approximate um, the uh, the shape of the existing tree. And again, um, you can edit the actual symbols themselves. So if we went in here, ET symbols, and looked at this one here, this is the one we're using. Right click on that, choose edit, edit the 3D component. It's You'll see here that it's just a generic solid. There's actually not a lot of editing to do there, uh, but this is what the generic solid actually looks like. Uh, the one thing that you probably could edit in here if, is if you wanted to change the default color uh, to change that to something different because you didn't want to play around with class colors or something like that then certainly you could you could do that. And of course the other thing that you can do is if you want a variety of these uh, in different colors but you just want to maintain this shape then you could right click on this choose duplicate and remember these symbols have to begin with 4 so we could call this ET canopy and it was 13 so let's call it um, B for example so here's ET canopy B and if I edit that and I change the color to something a lot lighter exit the symbol. Now remember this is using a texture so we'll go in or we'll select the tree there we go and actually turn off the fact that it's using uh, a texture for the canopy and we'll get the slightly different color actually if I go into 3D properties and choose the one that I'm wanting, that one there, that's what we want to do. So you'll get that slightly variation, uh, that slight variation in color there and have both of those so you'll be able to use both of those symbols for uh, different trees in the file. So uh, that pretty well covers the, uh, the 3D aspects of the existing tree.